Great. Thank you, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, come on. This is the last speaker of the day. And I'm not going to take 30 minutes. So there should be more cheers than that. Okay. I just want to be here to, to personally thank each and every one of you. Um, it is true. I mean, as a high school teacher, as a high school administrator, um, I always said that the heart and soul of my school was always the counseling department. Because you see, yeah, I expect more of that. But let's face it, counselors, as counselors, uh, you know, it's all fine and good for us to teach, you know, all of, the, uh, all of the content areas. But if students don't feel connected, if students don't feel they have a place where they can um, meet with someone that knows their name, that knows a little bit about their history, what they want to do, where they want to go, then it's just a, it's just a, it's a process, right? You go to class to class and somebody may know you, somebody may not. And I always found that the stronger your counseling department, the more engaged your students were, the more engaged your parents were. So when I say to you that the counselors are the key and the heart and soul of a school, that's the context within which I make those comments. Um, I also want you to know that uh, last spring, <clears throat> I completed my FAFSA as well, my last FAFSA. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, this guy hasn't finished his bachelor's yet? What's he doing? <clears throat> well, no, I'm finishing my doctorate. And even as graduate students, you fill out a FAFSA. Uh, so I filled out my FAFSA, and it made me remember personally when I was uh, in high school. My parents were both born in the United States, but neither one of them went to college. And they knew that my brother and I were going to go to college, uh, and they told us that from a very young age, but they had no idea how that was going to happen. They had no idea what we needed to do to go to college. They had no idea except my dad always would say, I'm going to work until I drop dead because I'm going to have to pay for college, right? Well, I still remember when I mentioned to him that we found a way to go to college, and the first step is FAFSA. So went about my business, and we talked about FAFSA, and we kept talking about FAFSA. And I still remember the day that my dad came to me and said, OK, Richard, when am I going to meet this person named FAFSA? <laughs> Right? He thought it was a person. Uh, but when we sat down and, and I said, Dad, all we need to do is you need to complete your tax returns. We need that information. We'll apply. And then that'll make us eligible for student loans, or it could be eligibility for some grants. Then he understood. And what was really powerful about that was that from that point forward, my parents were empowered because they knew that there was a path to college that was more than just they're going to work until they drop dead to pay for their kids to go to college. There was a path. And, and they trusted that people in the schools were going to help us stay on the path. But they knew that what they could do was things that they were already do, doing. They were going to complete their tax returns. They were going to help fill out those forms. And then we would take it from there. You know, research shows that 90% of students that complete a FAFSA actually enroll. In, in post-secondary education. Think about that, 90%. And one of the questions that I always get asked is, how do you know this is going to make a difference? If we say we want a college and career-going culture, how do you know this is going to make a difference? I don't know about you, but that's a pretty powerful statistic. If, if we know that 90% of anything is going to happen, you know, we're going to invest in that every day of the week and twice on Sunday, right? So that's what's important. So I want to thank you for your hard work today. I'm also particularly thrilled about the fact that undocumented students can now apply for Cal Grants, right? That's incredibly important. And what's so interesting about it, I'm not going to get real political on you, but I will say this. As a man of color, right, who was born in Arizona, who when I go back to visit my family in December during the holiday breaks, Guess what? I run the risk of getting pulled over and asked for my ID just because of what I look like. But to think that in the United States, we actively recruit college graduates from across the world to come to the United States in very hard to fill professions. And here we have in the United States kids, through no fault of their own, that are here, that are studying hard, that are graduating at the top of their classes in our university, in our public schools and just want to go to the university and give back to their society. Do you think that we have put barriers in front of these children to say you can't? I don't know about you, but I am thrilled that we're removing those barriers, one barrier at a time. 
And if you think this isn't going to pick up some steam, ladies and gentlemen, just look at the election results to tell you what kind of power is starting to develop in the United States around this notion of inclusivity, right? And the Latino community, just like American Express, we're everywhere. <laughs> so with that, I also want to especially thank our community-based organization partners, our CBOs, uh, because, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. The first step of a 12-step program is to recognize you have an issue. So here's my admission. Thank you for all coming to my session. Here's our admission. We as a school system haven't always partnered very well with you. We just haven't. We're a bureaucracy. Right? So there I said it publicly. We're a bureaucracy. So that means that oftentimes even the best of our intentions get mired in process, get mired in regulation. And it's never really about focusing in on what the vision is. This has been an opportunity for us to kind of reform our way of doing business. Our vision is that every student, when they graduate and leave our schools, will have the option of going to college or into a career. And more and more now, when students decide to go into a career, they need training. They need specialized training, which, by the way, in a certificate program, they need to fill out a FAFSA to get some financial aid support. We don't have the boots on the ground. We don't have the numbers of people. I'm embarrassed to tell you what our student to counselor ratios are in, in San Francisco. And I'm embarrassed because we're not funded at the level that we can increase at yet. But what I am proud to say is that around this vision that every student will go to college or into a career and that they will make that decision, we have an incredible team in San Francisco that is part of that vision. And that's you, our CBO community. And whereas in the past we haven't been good partners, I want you to know here and now that as a superintendent, as all of the staff members and all of the counselors and the educators that are in this room, that's going to be different, especially around this particular issue, because we cannot do it without you. And the work that you do out in the community is work that we believe in. And this is, I don't want, you know, last year we had, what, 61% of our students fill out the FAFTA. I'm going to tell you, I want 100% this year. Even if they don't go, I want them to fill out that form. And we're not going to be able to get them to fill out that form to understand what it is about to not have other parents think that FAFSA is a person rather than a form like my dad did. We cannot do that unless we're working together. We're working in a unified way. So I want to thank you as CBO partners for coming to the table, being partners with us, sitting side by side, understanding what this means to the children of our community. I guess the final thing that I'll say is that you know, when we looked at the election results on Tuesday night, I didn't sleep very well because, you know, right around midnight, Prop 30 was still, and it's, it's already passed, so I can talk about it now. Uh, but Prop 30 still wasn't passing. I'm thinking, I'm not going to sleep anyway, so I want to see what, what's going to happen here. But it was interesting as I kept refreshing my, my page on the, the uh, San Francisco election returns, whereas it was barely sneaking by at a statewide level, in San Francisco, it was a slam dunk in the 70 percentages, right, of, of people passing Prop 30. And I got to tell you, no matter how nail-biting the rest of the state results were, I was so gratified as a resident, as a citizen, as a parent, and as a taxpayer in San Francisco, I was so proud of my community that supports public education the way our community does. And as someone that's a San Franciscan by choice, I say to you, thank you. Thank you for making the reality for kids such that this is one step to getting them to go to college or go to a career. And we're working together, and I want to thank you for spending your day here and actively being involved and actively working together with us. All right, so I've shared with you my first step of the 12-step program. The next step is we're going to really ramp up our partnership. And we want to hear from you, what do we need to do? How do we work better so that we're efficient, we're coherent, we're not giving mixed messages, you're getting what you need to help make this a reality, and we're providing the support that you need to, to, to partner in an effective way with us. So with that, I want to say gracias, I want to say thank you, and when we celebrate 100% submission of FAFSA, I promise the first round's on me.
So with that, I want to say have a great afternoon and thank you for being here.